Hi, it's Carla Van La here, artist and art therapist from Victoria, Australia. I'm currently actually in southeastern Victoria. I'm on Bonnarong land and I do pay my respects to the people of Bonnarong Nation and um, elders past, present and future of this beautiful place, this lovely land in which I am. Today I am going to present in this short video, uh, I've called it Wonders of the Daily Walk, How Art Helps Us Continue in Times of Change. So in this video, I'm going to take you for a walk through some ideas, uh, some ideas from myself and others and some findings from my own research about how art is so important in supporting us through times of change and challenging times and about how art connects us and helps us to continue and how we can value and communicate these qualities about art to other people as part of our work. So I will start by uh, sharing a little walk that I had this morning with you. Some of my musings. Here it comes. Hi, it's Carla here. Here I am, I'm out on my daily walk, daily lockdown walk, like lots of people are doing at the moment. It's more than just exercise, right? I was reading in The Age the other day, there's a man who was just talking about how he's doing more bike riding with his family than he ever has before. Yeah, it's time to clear the head. Yeah, give me time to spend some time with others. So sort of bonding. I know for me, it's a time where I have a chat, even though I'm in a different place from my mum and my son my friends I ring them up especially my mum I've been talking to mum a lot out on the walks and that reminded me that that's something that we used to do a lot when I was a teenager we just go out for walks together and have a chat and that reminded me of you know something special that's been part of my life for a long time and the idea of just bringing that forward into the present maybe in a different way that also got me thinking because while I've been out walking, I've been practicing this idea of mentalizing, which is essentially just thinking about your feelings and feeling about what you're thinking. So I've been sort of purposefully finding places to walk where I haven't walked before and just like, almost intentionally getting lost. Yeah, noticing how I feel when I see like a little path that I haven't seen before. And like which part of me is really curious and wants to go there. And which other part of me is like, oh no, you don't know where it's going. Might make the walk longer, might make you get lost. And then how I feel about even thinking that. I think, oh, you know, you chicken. Or I feel like a bit rebellious against myself and so I'll go there anyway and I'm like oh really curious to see what unfolds and then I get lost yeah so I've been getting lost and then I've been noticing how much I love getting lost and that's also something that connects me with an even older experience which is when well from my childhood when I just roam freely getting lost in the bush and um, exploring. And so these daily walks have been in a couple of ways have been a way for me to reconnect with and bring parts of myself forward, maybe parts of myself that, you know, I just haven't consciously connected with for a while. And that got me thinking about ideas that I wrote about in one of my thesis chapters, the chapter about change and continuity, but it's really about how do we bring ourselves forward in times of change. And in thinking about that, of course, I started thinking about the role of the arts 
artists and art therapists in supporting us to continue, especially in getting through this pandemic together and the rebuilding and the recovery that will come after that. Okay, that's a little introduction. So, there's a few little threads that I'm gonna try and weave together today. Um, a few days ago, I attended a webinar it was uh, the Australia Institute put it on and it was titled The Role of Artists and the Arts. Over, over 1,500 people actually attended and the panel included Senator Sarah Hanson Young, uh, an author and playwright, Melanie Tate, quite famous, and economist Richard Dennis. So, uh, they covered some really important points during the webinar um, and I've taken some snippets out of their video to put into this video to show you just um, some of the really important things that were said. So one of the first ones that I want to share with you is um, Senator Sarah Hanson Young and she's talking about how the arts were the first to be shut down in this current pandemic crisis. So once again, I'll, I'll try and do a screen share for you and take you to this little snippet. There we go. Beginning, the moment those first lots of restrictions started coming out, um, in relation to our response to COVID-19, it was the arts and the entertainment space um, that was um, smashed instantly, uh, literally overnight from um, gigs being organised to events being closed, uh, cancelled, pubs closing their doors. Um, and um, of course, um, a whole season of activities uh, that was going to be running between March and right through to uh, July, August were seemingly just wiped off, off the calendar. Okay, yeah. So the arts were hit really quickly, really early and really hard, really early. Um, we've got, I'll go to another little clip from that video from Australia Institute. And this one's Richard Dennis. And he's actually, I won't give too much away, but he's talking about um, the arts being a backbone of, of the country. So I will just go back to the video and I have to just scroll forward a little bit. So bear with me here. Oops, I'm getting close here. Yep, that's about right. Listen to this one. Obviously, you know, the, the arts industry is, is greater than the sum of its parts. It's, it, it's the way that we understand ourselves, each other. It's the stories we tell. There's uh, 193,000 people employed in the creative arts in Australia. Uh, to put that into perspective, there's less than 50,000 people work in coal mining. So, you know, we've all heard these stories about how, how some industries are the backbone of the nation and they, they, they hold the economy aloft. Uh, well, they're nonsense stories. And they're, ironically, you know, the creative arts are probably worse at telling stories about themselves uh, than, than, than the coal mine owners. So, yeah, less than 50,000 people employed to make coal, nearly 200,000 people employed in the, directly in the creative arts. How about that, hey? So he's not an artist, he's an economist. And he's putting forward that view. Wow, 200,000 people employed in the creative arts in Australia. It's huge. So I'll go back now uh, to Sarah again and give you another little clip from uh, their, their video. And she's sort of starting to talk here about how the arts are uh, help us manage to get through. So let's have a look at this one. Once again, just bear with me while I find the right spot to take you to in the video.
some roundabout here. It's going to happen next. However, let me be really clear. Um, we are all consuming more content, art and entertainment than ever before. And I think um, this is where the opportunity comes for making sure we um, invest in a sector that is, going to he is helping us through this crisis, keeping us all sane, but also um, will be one of the first we reach to um, as we start the recovery, because there's going to be a lot of conversations about how we've got through this, how we um, work through this as a community, what this meant to us, how this impacts on our national identity, where Australia fits in the rest of the world now. Um, art and uh, entertainment is how we make sense of those things. So it's absolutely essential, not to mention, of course, the economics. How about that? A politician saying it's art that keeps us sane. Hello, art therapists. Love that. Right, so uh, we've just heard how the arts were hit really hard, how the arts uh, is a huge part of the economy and the social fabric of Australia and how the arts help keep us sane through challenging times. So despite these terrible conditions, uh, Artists in the arts are getting humanity through this pandemic all around the world. And there's just one more clip that I wanted to share with you. And here it's, it's Senator Sarah again, talking about, you know, just acknowledging the artists all around the world, but in Australia, like everywhere else, making funny videos, performing music, dancing online, sharing creative activities, streaming live events, the list goes on and on. So let's just hear from Sarah again and, um, and then I'll, I'll share with you some more of my thoughts as well. Back to our share screen and I'm going to zoom forward. It's coming, 52.23, there we are. Community. And, you know, at a times of crisis, it's been artists who have tended to be there at the forefront, you know, during the bushfires. Who was it that went out and organised the fundraisers um, straight off the back without even being asked? It was Australian musicians and Australian artists. Um, right now, you know, people, artists sitting in their homes and, uploading funny videos for us to all watch on, um, you know, on, on Instagram and Twitter and trying to keep um, enthusiasm and hope alive. And um, through recovery, it's going to need to be us giving confidence back to them as well and in return uh, to the rest of the community to say, you know, yeah, we've been apart for this long, but actually um, we're going to um, all work together to make sure we can kind of come out of this bigger and, and, and brighter, uh, not, not worse off. And I think... Um, engaging um, that confidence is going to be so important to the healing, not just of artists, but of the Austra whole Australian community. Right. So, gratitude to the arts there and also um, focusing on the idea of, of building confidence. Yeah. I guess I just loved the acknowledgement of the generosity of artists and creatives in challenging times, that even when their own industry is being cut, they continue to give. And I, I guess I just wanted to ask, how is it that artists continue to be so generous in the bleakest moments and times of need? And I guess, I mean, I know myself, I've experienced that happening even uh, early in January when the bushfires came through my partner's daughter Lucy Hogan who um, is training with the Queensland Ballet she was staying here and the first thing she did was run out the door <laughs> to help with a fundraiser and she was you know teaching children ballet to raise funds and she actually inspired me to do the art therapy first aid fundraisers 
And so I thought, what do I do? Oh, I do art therapy and run PDs and things. So I'll, I'll just do that too. So I guess the point I wanted to make is, well, yeah, I started asking, how is it that artists keep being so generous, right, in these times? And I, I believe that part of the answer is because artists are empaths. We have empathy. Okay, we really care. <laughs> and um, I guess it can be, you can think of it a bit like a little bit of a chicken and egg scenario where it might be, well, do, does the art that the artists make help them to develop empathy? Or is it that the artists are so empathic that the art is born out of empathy and exudes empathy? And I really do think it's a bit of a chicken and an egg and that that's a symbiotic relationship. Interestingly enough, some of these questions were things that I looked at really deeply when I was doing my doctoral research. And uh, part of what I found was that in seeing and engaging with each other's artworks that we can experience a sense of deep empathy and connection with each other. So again, I wanted to share my screen with you. Um, and this time I'm going to go to a couple of pages from my book, my research. I'll try and, oh, oh sorry. Uh, I'll pause the share if I can. No, I'll have to stop the share and I just have to set it up in the background before I share it with you. Um, sorry. Okay, I'm going to pause the video for a minute while I um, figure out how to share this with you. But I'll be back. Won't be long. Bing! Magic. <laughs> I'm back. Um, so I'll share with you now these, uh, just a couple of pages from my own research. Uh, my research is called Seeing Her Stories. And we've just gone here to um, a page in the chapter called Relationship Connection and Co-Creation. And in this, these couple of pages here, I'm telling the story of visiting my friend Lorraine Abernethy in her studio. She's an artist, she's a painter like me, and she works a bit differently, of course. Um, but there she is in the, the top left-hand corner showing me some of her artworks. And in this visit, when I was looking at her artworks, I was actually really quite um, astounded and very touched and moved when I felt a really strong affinity with some of the uh, symbols and shapes and colours and themes in her artwork because they really resonated with some of the symbols, shapes and themes and colours in my own artwork and they're my artworks on um, the right hand page. So I think that you probably can just see with your own eyes some of the connections between her artworks and mine. They seem to be talking to each other a bit. Um, and I guess the, what I wrote about in here was just that sense of connection that Lorraine and I developed. And I went on to um, paint a portrait of Lorraine. And she, when she saw the portrait, she also described feeling really moved because she saw herself in a different way um, and maybe saw some vulnerability in herself that she didn't necessarily show or see very often. And she was really, I, I told her that I was zoomed in close on her face because I felt such a connection to her through her eyes. And she then sort of said that she'd felt that with me as well, even though she hadn't told me that we had this big, this strong connection through our seeing, our ways of seeing and through our eyes. And in this chapter, I write about, um, I, I go to Learmonth, 
who, uh, who takes an evolutionary psychology perspective that sees us as relational and art making beings. Both relating and art making have a relationship with imagination and cognitive fluidity, which is seen as adaptive and survival functions through which by working with the material metaphor, we're able to change our own minds. So I really wanted to share that bit with you. And also this, this part down here where I talk about how these perspectives of us as relational and creative beings understand art making as a relational process. The qualities of interpersonal relating have a reciprocal relationship with the shared creative process in which they can simultaneously enable and enhance one another. This is that symbiotic relationship I was talking about. These perspectives are affirmed by what occurred in my research, whereby our personal relationships prompted our engagement in creative exploration and our shared creative explorations deepened the bonds in relationships. So the reason that I especially wanted to share that part with you today is because I feel as though it really relates to how the arts help us get through, especially getting through the pandemic and times of being physically separated from people who we know and love and care for and about. I wanted to just talk about philosophers Dick Vuitton and Armstrong who have written about this kind of thing in their book Art as Therapy and they explain how art can hold us up a mirror to ourselves um, and but perhaps to parts of ourselves that have been maybe under acknowledged, under examined or under seen in our lives and when we see parts of ourselves reflected back to us in the mirror of art we can experience a feeling of being empathised with and being affirmed by and being understood by the art, okay? We actually experience attunement and connection in our relationship with artworks. And this extends into a feeling of relationship and connection with the artists and also others who audience the art. Okay, this is part of how art works to connect us. Okay, and part of how art is helping us to get through this time. Even when we're physically apart, we are connected through art. Another significant discussion in the Australia Institute Forum was focused on creating new narratives and new cultural stories for how we, we ourselves, artists and art-based practitioners, how we articulate the value of art, the social and the economic value, and how these are always intertwined and can't be separated. Okay, so what I want to return to here is to the experience that I mentioned about in my walk, the idea of connecting with practices that continue through our lives in times of change. So I've been witnessing on social media, and I'm sure many of you will have been as well, some of my friends posting about having the time in lockdown to do things like make lasagna using my mother's recipe. And this is a recipe that takes two days. And one of the participants in the Mandala A Day Challenge, who was sharing how her mandala that she'd made that day was actually baking beautiful round loaves of bread and homemade bread. And she described how this creative and loving practice gave her a great sense of connection to the women in her family. And I guess they're the women who taught her to bake. In my own research, I found that part of what can happen when we share our stories through art is that we can become aware of change occurring and also more aware of things that continue. So this is in the chapter I mentioned before, the chapter about change and continuity. 
So I found that making and viewing and sharing artworks can connect us with a sense of both self continuity and also transpersonal continuity or intergenerational or cultural continuity. And so once again, I'll go, I'll try and share you um, to a couple of pages from my book where we look at those things. So I'll just pause it while I find it and I'll be right back. I'm back. Okay, so we'll go now to um, this is page 243. So on the left there, you can see um, that's a, actually a, a segment or a detail from a, a bigger painting where I painted pictures of my great grandmother, Laura May. That was part of my research and my investigation that in, in painting this picture, I became aware of a really strong sense of connection with the women in my family that extended across time. So There's this real sense of continuity. And when I wrote about that, it's down here, here, this idea of self continuity, it's a sense of connection between one's past and one's present. And it's been described as positively related to psychological well-being, psychological equanimity, and even physical health. Researchers fascinated with self-continuity have focused their attention on nostalgia, linking nostalgic experiencing with psychological health, optimism, memory, affect, drive, and creativity. And so the accounts from myself and the participants in my research support the idea that seeing artworks can be a way of evoking nostalgia and experiencing and nurturing self-continuity. How about that? Okay, so this is so important to understand this function of art especially now, this idea of continuity, how art and artworks are related to our own experiences of self-continuity across time, but also um, to, to larger narratives that might flow down through generations or through our culture across time. So there's also the idea change and continuity being really linked okay so by noticing our changing responses and relationship with artworks our own relationship with change can change okay so this is important because rather than becoming subject to some of therapy's dominant stories so stories like oh there's something wrong with me I need to change. I need to change my behaviour. I need to change my self-talk. I need to change my patterns or something. Okay. When we mindfully observe what is actually there, okay, as I was describing when I uh, talked about practising mentalising during my morning work, I'm just, uh, just noticing, attending to what's actually there, what's happening in my inner world as well as the outer world through my senses. So when we mindfully observe what is actually there through our senses in the here and now, we can't help but notice that things change. Things are always changing. We breathe in, we breathe out, the sun rises and sets, the light changes, the temperature changes, the clouds drift through the sky, our attention shifts, our emotions change, and we experience the Buddhist certainty, change is the only constant. In challenging times like this pandemic, so much has already changed and is still changing. 
and with many more changes to come. So some of these changes are losses and things that will cause us grief and be traumatic. And rather than putting pressure on ourselves or for therapists, rather than putting pressure on the people that we work with to change ourselves and our responses to this changing world, what if we were just to accept that change is inevitable and instead turn to the arts to help us find ways to continue when things are challenging and changing day to day? So like my daily walk and my chat with my mum, like exploring and getting lost in bushy paths and like preparing recipes passed down through generations, like a daily practice of walking, yoga, making a mandala or any creative practice, what brings us forward? What activity do we love that reminds us of who we are and who we've always been? I sometimes ask students of art therapy to do a meditation in which they close their eyes and imagine, and you can do this too now if you want to, close your eyes and imagine. Imagine or remember the moment that you woke up this morning and moving through from that moment to where you are now, every piece of art that you've encountered along the way. So this would include any music that would be playing, any uh, printed or patterned or textured, you know, fabric or pieces of artwork in your environment, any embellishments, you know, on your own person, any accessories, nails, your makeup, anything that's been designed to be aesthetically pleasing, okay, and not merely utilitarian anything take out anything any bit of art that you've encountered today and then imagine once you've taken all those things away imagine waking up and moving through the day after you've removed the art now i often ask people to draw a picture of what life is like when you take out all the art so if you want to do that, you can now just pause, draw the picture of what life's like when you take out all the art. Or you can just do it in your imagination. And when you have, well, I'm imagining, I'm imagining for you, it's a pretty bleak place because I've done this exercise myself and it's not pleasant. So I'd like you to, again, imagine that you're waking up on a new day and just put all the art back in. Put it all back in and then put some more in and a bit more. Put lots of art in, okay? And if you want to, just imagine that world, a world that's full of art and what it's like to live in this world. And if you want to, you can pause the video and make an artwork about that world as well. And have a look at them side by side. Now I've seen a lot of these kinds of images and I know which world I would want to live in. Um, I'm going to go back to another snippet from the Australia Institute's video now. Um, and Melanie Tate, the author and playwright, is expressing a really similar sentiment so I'll just pause while I find it and then I'll be back and I'll show it to you. Bye. Okay, so I'll share this screen to you and um, here comes Melanie Tate. About the arts, but I would...
encourage Australian artists to be talking to the people around them from a really basic point of view. We had, uh, there was an, an actor on my feed suggested that for one day, if Australia shut down, Netflix shut down, Stan shut down everything that artists, Australian artists had made, they'd really know about what it is that we contribute to our society. But I would argue that it even goes further than that. If you think about, say, the top rating TV shows, so MasterChef last night, um, Dancing with the Stars, a couple of weeks ago all of those shows there are artists involved in there are artists designing the costumes there are artists uh, training the, the dancers um, if we look at football for example and sport it's an artist who is designing the look of a team and and the the costumes if you will of the team the arts is in every single moment of our life as Australians as, and as human beings all over the place so I would I would encourage um, we artists to get that conversation going to talk about how the arts is part of everything that we do constantly like even this pencil somebody an artist decided to make it pink you know like this there's, there's all sorts of ways everywhere in our life that the arts are involved and I would really encourage artists and people to to recognize this and look at this on a micro and a macro level Thanks. Okay. Right. So, as we try and comprehend how art is so important in getting us through these challenging times, I hope there's been some key points here today that ring true for you and that can help you to explain and advocate for the arts now in lockdown, in times of loss and trauma and afterwards in recovery and rebuilding. And I really hope that for art therapists especially, that understanding and maybe finding some ways to articulate um, and value the work that you do in art-based practices can help you to explain it and describe it to others, um, give you confidence and help inform your work. So here are some of the key points just to recap. Artists and art extend empathy towards us. They connect us with parts of ourselves and with each other, especially in times of social distancing, staying connected makes us stronger. Okay, and number two, key point, art-based practices help us to continue in times of challenge and change. Art helps us to connect with a sense of self-continuity and transpersonal continuity, helping us to remember who we are and helping us to remember what's important to us and what we love and what gives us purpose and meaning. And these are the things that will keep us going. These are the things that give us will. Without art, life would be bland, robotic and, well, lifeless. It's hard to imagine even living in a world devoid of art. And a wonderful notion from the wonderful Sean McNiff comes to mind, a beautiful art therapist. Uh, he says, when we connect to creativity, we connect with the life force of the universe. And that's why even in challenging times, like this pandemic, artists keep creating and giving us art because they really can't help it, because art is life. And that's why we need art. Go art, <laughs> go artists, go art therapists, go creatives everywhere. Go art.